Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in my RTX 4060 review I featured a few comparisons to 2019's RTX 2060 at 1080p and when using DLSS. I also covered the benefits of frame generation. Today however we're keeping things simple and comparing the legendary mid-range RTX 2060 to the newly released 4060 at native res only. Now the 2060 is a PCIe 3.0 x16 card so I decided it was only fair to include not only PCIe 4.0 but 3.0 benchmarks for the newer 4060 as well just to see if and by how much this affects the PCIe X8 4060's performance. To do this I've set different PCIe gen limits in the BIOS which isn't what you do in the real world but it does allow us to keep all other test factors identical and as always I've paired both cards with 32 gigs of DDR4 clocked at 3200 MHz and my i5 12400F. Just how much difference is there four and a half years on then at the mid range? Well let's find out. So to start with we have Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p Ultra. With the RTX 2060 we were seeing 60fps with a 1% low of 48 and a 0.1% low of 45. In PCIe 3.0 mode the 4060 hit 82 with a 1% low of 62 and a 0.1% low of 56. In the standard PCIe 4 mode, which is what my 12400F system supports by default, we were seeing the same average with slightly increased percentile figures, especially when it came to that 0.1% low which made a jump from 56 to 60, so a little more consistency here. Where possible I used games in built benchmark tools just so that we were getting as accurate results as possible but games that didn't have a built in benchmark well I just tried to replicate the exact same scenario three times over with each configuration. Far Cry 6 also has a built in benchmark run and here we were using the 1080p Ultra preset once again. HD textures were however not installed as I simply don't have the disk space. With the 2060 we were seeing 83 FPS on average with decent percentile lows. The 4016 PCIe 3 mode hit 109 with a 1% low of 88 and a 0.1% low of 77 and in PCIe 4.0 mode we saw a few more frames on average 115 in comparison to 109 of the card running in PCIe 3 mode. The percentile lows were also improved up from 88 and 77 to 94 and 88 respectively. In Forza Horizon 5, once again at the 1080p Ultra preset, we were seeing 72 FPS for the 2060, which is still a very respectable result. I think the 6 gig 2060 is still a fantastic used bargain in 2023, especially considering the percentile lows often hold up quite well in games too. With the 4060 at PCIe 3.0 mode we were seeing 116 FPS followed by 90 and 75 and with PCIe 4 mode which of course the card will default to in a modern system like the one I'm using we were seeing slightly improved average figures to FPS so nothing really in it here. But the 1 and 0.1% lows did show more noticeable differences, although if I didn't have the frame counter enabled, I wouldn't be able to tell that these differences were here, put it that way. Still in comparison, between the 2060 and the 4060 we are seeing some nice changes, as you would expect though. That's not necessarily an endorsement for the card, of course I'm merely showing you the figures that I've seen today, and then of course you can make your own minds up as to whether or not something like this is right for you. So in Hogwarts Legacy, 72 FPS with the 2060, no built in benchmark run here so I created my own following the same path with each card. In PCIe 3 mode the 4060 hit 90 FPS which was the same as the card in PCIe 4 mode. Those percentile lows were also quite similar but that 0.1% low um, did suffer a little bit more with the card in PCIe 3.0 mode, 34 in comparison to 42. You'll notice the 0.1% low of the 2060 however was pretty similar still. So frame drops here and there across all three results and with both cards unfortunately. 
For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the in-game benchmark run gave us 69 FPS on the 2060, very nice. The percentile lows also suffer a little bit more in the benchmark run than they will do in an actual game, but this is quite an intensive situation, so therefore it's best to sort of show you a worst case scenario across the board. In PCIe 3.0 mode, 106 FPS for the 4060, and the PCIe 4 result was 107. Again, those percentile lows were very similar, and no noticeable differences between the two modes for the newer mid-range card, that's for sure. Our penultimate result is Red Dead Redemption 2. Here with the ultra textures, everything else was set to high apart from TAA medium, which was set to, well, I just said it, medium. <laughs> TAA was set to medium, everything else was at high, and the textures, as always, were set to ultra. It's another really good effort from the 2060, which is shaping up to be a really good used card in 2023. If you can find one for a good price, it's very much well worth it, even still. For the 4016 PCIe 3 mode, 107 FPS, 3 frames lower than the card in PCIe 4 mode, and again those percentile figures were pretty similar, though we did see a few more frames when it came to that 0.1% figure for the 4060 running at its best. Of course results may also differ depending on the CPU you're using as well, but I find that something like the 12400F is an ideal pairing for all of, or for both of these cars, in fact the 2060 and the 4060. It's still a great choice in 2023 and it doesn't cost too much either. Finally then we have The Last of Us Part 1, 1080p with a high preset and SSR or screen space reflections off. Here the 2060 will suffer a little bit more, not just because of its age but because of the VRAM at these settings as well. But overall the percentile lows remained quite consistent. Results were similar with the 4060 in both modes, though 4 more frames on average definitely put it ahead in PCIe 4 mode. And when it came to those percentile figures, a couple of little changes as well, but the difference between the 2060 and 4060 at its best was about 24 FPS on average, with improved frame times, of course, but there we go. So overall, I hope this information proves useful to you. We have covered DLSS and frame gen in another video, but I know those features aren't for everyone. I know that native is probably what most of you would prefer to see in benchmarks like this. So that's what I thought we'd cover in today's one, but we will be doing a few more frame gen benchmarks in an older system with this card as well. I hope you've enjoyed this one today though. If you did, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you do have any more suggestions regarding this card or any others, please let me know as well in the comments whether you want to see more 4060 benchmarks, 4060 Ti benchmarks, or benchmarks with the 2062. As always though, I will have some older cars and older systems being tested very soon as always. And a couple of low cost budget builds coming up as well. Thank you as always for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.